Gosh, <laughs> this is amazing. By the way, good morning. Uh, we just woke up to seeing these gophers everywhere. I made eye contact with one and I was I was trying to get my long lens for my camera on to try to like get a distant shot because all wildlife is scared of you, of course. But this guy made eye contact with me and he just comes and oh. runs over. Wait. So crazy that just eight hours ago, this whole area was being blown apart. Lightning, thunder, the craziest rain I've ever seen. And uh, now it's all calm, peaceful, Barely any wind. If you haven't seen that video, it's actually linked down below. You definitely have to check out yesterday's video. One of the top experiences of my life. And now landscapes are about to change significantly because we're now driving all the way to a place by the name of Banff, which is arguably one of Canada's most famous destinations. Well guys, as I said, I'm a man of my word, and today I'm the new gray water specialist. We hit enough likes on the last video, so. That is the pit of doom. Oh, it smells already in here. Uh oh, here it It's like watching all of our Walmart groceries come back down this pipe. As you guys know, we've been traveling across Canada and usually people would be staying in beautiful camps like this one here. But the thing is, RV parks have been closed up to this point now. They have just reopened in Ontario, so we kind of started our trip a week too early if you ask me. But at the end of the day, we still got by staying in Walmart. But the downside is, we needed places to drop our gray water, our black water, and the way we've been doing it is actually basically begging businesses like this one if we could just do a single drop. And they don't really generally do it, so you have to kind of negotiate. I just offered the nice lady 20 bucks, she said no problem, so she pointed it out and we went and dropped. But I think for 40 bucks you could stay here the night, get electricity, and dump all your gray water, black water, so I probably recommend that. This is the worst day ever. The Royal Terrell Museum, the Dinosaur Museum of Alberta, of the world, is closed. I'm so freaking bummed. This is where I came as a seven year old boy, had the best time of my life, saw dinosaur bones, learned about Tyrannosaurus rexes and all the good stuff. And because of COVID, there's maximum occupancy of 200 people and they have met that threshold and they are booked out until tomorrow. We can't wait around a day, unfortunately. It's a tough pill to swallow. <laughs> It's all right, Max. We have cheese strings in the car. Let's go. But on the bright side, we still got dinosaurs. Be careful! Christian! Kathy, it's not real. All right, enough of the ridiculousness. Let's talk about why this is actually the dinosaur capital of the world. Well, Drumheller, also known as the Badlands, once upon a time was actually all tropical. You had a ton of different kinds of species, and as times changed, it's now not so tropical, things were actually very well preserved because of the sandstone. And sandstone is like a sedimentary kind of rock. It actually helped keep bones and, and fossils and past imprints really well intact. There's been some of the most numerous fossil discoveries in this region, and that's why it's self-appointed the dinosaur capital of the world and as a kid it is literally the coolest place if you have a kid and you're like where should I bring them this year I still remember it as a seven-year-old it's 27 meters 26 all right we're about to hit the road and change up the landscapes dramatically but one quick little benefit of being in a dino town is that their dino juices are very cheap oh my gosh 89 cents Canadian the rain is pounding the car, the wind is blowing this way, so the water's not even dropping down the windshield, it's going right off it that way. It's crazy conditions right now. As it should be, we saved the best for last for you guys. We have now arrived in the Rocky Mountains, the crown jewel of Canada. It is a absolute beautiful landscape that we'll be showing you over the next few days. There's a lot to see, and I haven't been back here in a few years, so I'm really excited to be back, because this is my second 
maybe third time. It never gets old. It is just so grand and so incredible. Guys, the road trip is a success because that three bears and not the three bears from the little fairy tale with the porridge. This is a mother bear and her two little babies and they're just sitting there. And now there's about five cars stopped. We were like the first or second car, but they don't seem to care. They're just chilling, they're living life. We have made it up to the lower and upper Kananaskis Lake and it may look like a bit of a disappointing view here because everything's grayed out. Well, Max called it sea log. It looks completely flat, but that's fine because tomorrow we'll see it at its finest, I hope. But the truth is, this is the other state of the mountains. It is that moody, rainy look. It is the Pacific Northwest vibe, if you will, and I really love it. For me, this is a perfect way to arrive, and I know that we have enough time in the Rocky Mountains. We will get those days where the blues are popping and the greens are dropping. When I pictured going on an RV trip, it was this. Editing a photo from the comfort of my room, listening to the sound of rain, good tunes from the front of the RV, home cooked meals, friends. This is insane. This is what it's all about. And tonight, penne chicken pasta. With chicken. Heck yes. Mm -hmm. Another amazing meal by Katy. Gracias. We have some unfinished business to do here. We decided to come all the way back up this hill to the Upper Kanaskis Lake because we want to see it with decent weather. It's not super bright, not super sunny, but it's not raining. And this is the difference of just 12 hours. When it's sunny, this blue will pop. But even with a bit of gray, what's the word when there's gray clouds? Overcast. Overcast. <laughs> even with a bit of gray overcast, it's still popping, it's still dropping. Beautiful vibes. So that right there is Upper Kananaskis, and down there is the Lower Lake. You see, the reason they named them that is because this one's upper, higher, and that one, the lower, is lower. We have just come down the valley, and as you may see, the clouds have burned off. Beautiful blue skies. And right now we're off to Canmore, which is this really beautiful little city up in the mountains. This whole area is just like a fairy tale. And look who's driving. Yeah. Doing a good job at it too, may I add? No. Where's my hat? There it is. Now you're ready to drive. Yeah, much more comfortable. So a quick little grocery stop. We've been running out of bagels, a few other necessities. And this has to be the most beautiful Safeway grocery store I've ever seen. Check it out, right over there. 360 Rocky Mountains. It's absolutely absurd. This is Canmore. Canmore is basically like where Pocahontas would come for a coffee, maybe a night out with her pals, bring the raccoon out for some drinks. Uh, it's a little town in the Rocky Mountains, but you've got all sorts of hotels and amenities. And right now, we're actually gonna go to a coffee shop that my friend has recommended. He said it's the best in town, and he lives in town, so thanks, Jeff. Uh, yeah. Now don't get me wrong, I love a double-double, but it's not exactly the world's best coffee. So, once in a while, take that part. No, <laughs> take it out. Today I'm getting like a nice, properly done up cappuccino. Oh, Thank oh you so God. much. Well, here we go guys, let's try it. Which way is Tim Hortons? <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's really good. It's happening. We're staying tonight at an RV campground. Our first time on this trip. No home hardware, no Walmarts tonight. No illegal camping. We're gonna do it right. And this is the RV park. Woo. Turn off the generator. Crack this open and take this out. So this one goes into the side of the RV. Voila, and then Max. Clipping in the other end, unlimited water supply. And now for the first time on this trip, we get to enjoy the amenities without hearing the droning noise of the generator, as well as not using up the gas. For one night it was 50 Canadian or about 35 US, just to park here and to have all the electricity and water that you need. 
And good morning guys. First day here after sleeping in a campground and I have to say it didn't add a ton to the experience. Still had really bad Wi-Fi. Uh, we generally haven't needed heating anyways because it's not been that hot and so we don't need to be plugged in and we paid 50 bucks. I don't know, I guess for tonight we could have easily just slept on uh, what's known as Crown Land. In Crown Land you're able to legally park but uh, even just like a Walmart would have done. But anywho, to all my German viewers out there, we're just topping up on that. We haven't been able to cook food because our propane is now empty. So apparently we have to come to one of these machines and check that out. I'm not sure how this works. <laughs> So one thing that's actually quite surprising is that there are dumping stations for RVs which can be found like nearby provincial parks here in Canada at least. And I'm surprised how casual this is. Max is getting all equipped, our Blackwater specialist, that's a man who knows how to handle a hose. So yeah, you connect it to there, it's like a grate, but it's so shocking to me. There's nobody here, it's completely free to use. The only thing that kind of told us that this was the right spot was this sign here explaining the process, steps one through eight. And this is where we stop for a free dumping, the best kind of dumping. It's time to drive. So we drove about an hour and a half this morning and we're now just in between the border with BC and Alberta, two provinces. I'm actually from BC, it's where I live. If you want to see the route that we took, then I'll be making a full video on how to travel Canada and that's where I'll get a little bit more detailed on where we're going. But it made sense to make this detour uh, because we're going to be going further north to Jasper after this. One funny little thing that you'll know if you're Canadian is that all the provinces kind of have like a very friendly rivalry. So you'll either make fun of a province for being flat or you know one province will argue they're the prettiest but it's pretty much hands down BC is the prettiest but Alberta has a very small like maybe 100 kilometer stretch where they have the Rocky Mountains the funny part is though people from BC will joke that the part Alberta is so proud of is basically part of BC because it's like right on the border with it so yeah as a BC -er, I'm gonna join in and say Alberta you ain't got much it's basically BC's we have committed to this route to go into Wapta Falls now here in the BC side and it's a little unnerving because there's no turnarounds. This is not going to be easy to pull out if this gets too tough and we've already seen it get muddy in some areas. It's been raining heavily and this is a big RV. This is not a tiny little sprinter van so we gotta be a little careful with this. If we get stuck, nobody else is going to Wapta Falls behind us so that would be a lot of pressure. <laughs> Max, you're gonna push the RV, is that cool? That Holy. looks deep. <laughs> He's ready. Supposedly it's only half an hour, so it's like a really simple one-way hike, and then another half an hour back. I'm more prepared like if we're gonna do a 10k hike. <laughs> yeah, we have packed the same way we left for uh, Thunder Bay. <laughs> it's like we're Just going to do case. the sleeping giant again. <laughs> Ooh. 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 Check it out. Welcome to Wapta Falls. And that right there is beautiful. This is the best part right here. Oh my gosh, I'm getting wet. It's cold. It's cold, it's wet. But it's so beautiful. Look at the sheer power. The water is flowing over the edge. Are you gonna go down there? No, no way. That's like the splash zone. You can just see all the mist coming over that side there. If it was a nicer day, I would be really down to go down there, but it's a little cold. All right, time to go. <laughs> Rule number one, always travel with a cadet. Looks like we got a little can of nightmare on our hands. Heck yeah. America, I mean Canada. 
Not that much. So it's a throwback to being a little kid again. We're building a moat to drain. What? When you were parking, you heard when I told you to stop. Did you come out here just to tell us that? <laughs> yes. We are all trying to do our best to save this baby. And actually some people stop by. There are four and they are going to help us push. So wish us good luck. Well, give it, yeah. About 35 minutes later, 40 minutes later, we are here at the Emerald Lake and we're back in Alberta and I need a haircut. I'm getting this Justin Bieber flow right now. It's not what I want. Wow, this is stunning guys. Look at that right there. The water, true to its name, emerald colored and there's no breeze right now. The water is perfectly still. This is pretty incredible. If it was sunny though, guys, this water would just be glowing. It would be a completely different experience, a completely different color. But that's the Rockies. They're <laughs> a place that has a lot of rain, a lot of clouds, and so timing it can be pretty tough, especially when you're working with a very limited time schedule. But as a photographer, you actually have quite a bit of control as to what the final image looks like. I'll show you this. So this is what the scene looks like in a photo. But here's what you can do with the scene to restore a more sunny-like feel even when the sun wasn't out on the day that you traveled there. That is the power of Lightroom, Photoshop, and knowing what to do with your images. And guys, if you want to learn how to take control of your photography, your videography, then check out the link down below. I've got a free 60-minute training which will be an absolute game changer to take you from a beginner to pro as a content creator. It's completely free to do. Guys, we need to go to the next location and sun is setting quickly. To the can of dream. Made it just in time. The sun is about to dip down. And we are here at the most iconic, like probably the most iconic place in Canada. Now, it is unfortunately in Alberta. I'll give that to the Albertans. It is not part of the BC side. But uh, let me stop talking about it. Let me show you why this place is so epic. So, this is Lake Louise. Easily one of the most beautiful places on the planet. It's just insane. And honestly, again, pros and cons of the COVID life, there's no one here. This is another one of the spots that is better visited during the day because you get the sunlight lighting up the entire lake and it just takes a totally different form. But it's also really incredible to have this almost to ourselves. I hardly see anyone else here. All right, what time is it, guys? Annie's time. Annie's time. And our master chef makes her way to the kitchen. And guys, look what Kathy made. For when you don't have a campfire, put marshmallows with some dark chocolate in the middle, put it in the oven, and dip in some graham crapper, crappers. <laughs> graham crackers. <laughs> Yum. Mm -hmm. I sure know how to sell it. That's why I'm not a food blogger. It's like a rabid dog when you try to take its food away. Max, your job's on the line here. <laughs> Worth, Worth it. it. <laughs> Good morning, Alberta. Let's see what your double-double has in store. It's time to put you on the hot plate and see what it's all about. <coughs> Feels like there was a hair in my coffee. I'm thinking of driving back to Manitoba because Manitoba is where it's at. They know how to do double doubles. But aside from the hair, it's, it's not bad. Word on the street is they do have a special ingredient in their double doubles that they can only get here in the Rocky Mountains. And that was that hair, I think. Maybe it's like a hair of a deer, hair of a goat, maybe a bear. As you guys know, we pretty much share everything with you. The cameras are running 24 seven and I absolutely love it. I personally don't find it that tiring because it's something I would do even if no one was paying me to do it. Even if nobody was watching, I would still be filming my whole life. But there is definitely some times to turn off the cameras and so today we are going to take mostly a day for ourselves. We're gonna go now hike Lake Louise and uh, yeah, today's a little overcast but 
I'm just gonna enjoy one of the most beautiful places in the world. If you wanna watch more of the Canada road trip series, check out that playlist link down below. If you wanna learn how to become a content creator in 60 minutes, check the other link down below. And guys, let's get lost again in the next one.